Cairo's Tahrir Square was at the heart of Egypt's revolution. Young people determined to overthrow President Mubarak and his regime. The Egyptian Museum stands on the square. It is the heart of Egypt, the bearer of its heritage. In the chaos of a revolution, the museum's unique collection was looted. That building there behind the museum was burned down by supporters of Mubarak in an attempt to make the protesters look like hooligans. And look just how close it is to the museum. The protesters, the peaceful protesters, kind of had like a cordon around the museum and, and protected it from, from the thugs, and they fought them off eventually. It holds a special place in all our hearts as, as Egyptians, and I think that museum belongs to the entire world. It's, it's, it's human history, it's not just Egyptian history. So. I was there from the first moment. As soon as they started to come and fill the square here, I came and I stood there all day, every day. It was the most beautiful revolution you've ever seen. We came here when I was four, and we lived in the house here, in, in this square, right here. So as a small child, did you go there to that museum? Yes with my dad and my mom. <coughs> we used to walk in only about a couple of hundred yards. My father wanted me to see all the stuff that was there. From looking at what they made in this museum, you know how they live. The Egyptian museum bears witness to thousands of years of history, but have entranced the world. It holds the key to Egypt's past, and perhaps to its future too. I've always loved this museum. It's unlike any other. It houses 160,000 treasures from Egypt's ancient civilization. The age of the pharaohs began more than five millennia ago and lasted for 31 dynasties, some 3,000 years in which Egypt had no rival in art. Some of the pieces overturn what you thought you knew. This is a pharaoh called Hatshepsut, who uh, ruled Egypt for 40 years, a very powerful pharaoh. But the thing is that this is a woman. She was queen Hatshepsut. And in fact, that beard that she's wearing is the ceremonial beard that every pharaoh would wear. It's a sign of their status. The treasures of Tutankhamun's tomb are here. They were hauled out of the ground by a team led by the British archaeologist Howard Carter in 1923. 5,000 of them are here in Cairo, an incomparable collection. Yet part of the museum's magic is that everything is cluttered and covered in dust, as though it hasn't been touched since it first opened in 1902. The royal mummy room holds the remains of 11 of the most illustrious pharaohs, dating from 1650 BC. This is Ramesses II. He's one of the great pharaohs of the 19th dynasty. And he ruled for an astonishing 70 years, or nearly 70 years, 67 years. Of course, you can tell he's a pharaoh because his arms are crossed, and that's how they were placed in these tombs. 
He's incredibly well preserved. I mean, you can actually see his teeth. Luckily, in the looting, these major pieces weren't touched. But 54 items were taken, of which 23 have now been recovered. Others were vandalized and have had to be restored. I sought out Muhammad Ali, the chief curator. Salam. Hello, sir. <laughs> nice to see you. Bye. OK. You are welcome. Thank you. This is the way in for, uh, yeah. what, the officials? Rumours abound about who was responsible for the looting, from it being an inside job to its being provoked by the police in order to discredit the demonstrators. Mohammed wanted to show me where the thieves broke in on the night of January the 28th. This is the statue that was stolen. And there were other things taken from here. Yeah, 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 from into... this case, yeah. Didn't find anything here. It all gone? Yeah, all, all. Was this glass broken? Yeah, all the glass. All this glass broken. Yeah. And this is a new glass, yeah. They came to the ceiling, is that right? Yeah. Dropped a rope. With the rope, yeah, they used the rope to get into here. And so the last one, yeah, the rope cut and... Oh, the rope Drop broke and he dropped. Yeah, yeah. The, and Drop he broke here. this, obviously. And the glass are broken, and these objects, we found them. All in, over the floor. In, and his blood, the blood of the man, here. Here the remains, the remains of the blood. He Look. hid in the corner. He, yeah. yeah. Look. It might seem surprising yes. that a museum with such yeah. priceless objects appears to have quite modest security. So did all the, yeah. the young people who were in yeah. the square, they yeah. all tried many, to collect? Many people come to uh, protect the museum. Without the people come here to protect the museum and the army, the police, of course, the thieves may, may be stole many objects here, thousand objects. I'm told that when the looting went on, a lot of the protesters um, surrounded the museum to protect it from the damage that it might that's, that's very true. I saw that with my own eyes. Yeah, they did. Um, the the pro Mubarak thugs who were trying to put the entire country in a state of panic. What better than to attack one of the most treasured um, uh, pieces of history that we have uh, to make everybody feel like, oh, you know, there's you know, there's there's anarchy or chaos or whatever. So the students rallied round. Other people were trying to get in and steal stuff. Of course, yeah, it has a lot of valuable things. It's history, and you feel like, you know, you, you want to preserve that. You don't want to lose that. So well, a peaceful demonstration, a peaceful way to express your beliefs. And they were trying to make us out to be destroying yeah. culture, destroying the country, the ruining the country. Controversy over the looting and its aftermath has not gone away. The man who has carried the can for it all arrives at the museum with his entourage. He's the Minister of Antiquities, Dr. Zahi Hawass, the most famous person in Egypt aside from Omar Sharif. Could he be wearing something from his own clothing range? Yes, he has his own clothing range. Not only that, he's got his own reality TV show, broadcast on the History Channel in the United States. He's Egypt's leading archaeologist and one of the country's most controversial figures. He's looking out for me. And he, he's certainly not a man to be kept waiting. He's been under attack and forced to defend himself, not a role he appreciates. Dr. Hawass is a bit of a pharaoh himself. One of your favorite pieces? Yes, it is one of them. If you look at the statue, you can feel that he's a king. Mm -hmm. Because the artist put the royal blood inside his muscles. This museum is inside my heart all the time. We, I suffered a lot. If you try to change things, in Egypt, it's not easy. There is many people who have private business and they can control everything. 
But I'm fighting those people because at the end, the good thing will stay and Cairo Museum will be a star in the sky of Cairo. Why let did, us, let's move you, on. Let us move to another place. Okay. Well, you, as a film director, they should choose the location. Yeah. They should guide me. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Howard. I had a job keeping up with him. What I want to ask you about is about the set. I want to ask you about what happened and how you, how you, how you're dealing with it. He was bursting to give me his side of the story about what happened during the revolution. I stayed 37 day, days as a minister and I began to see all the thieves and the crooks that I faced them and I attacked them and I tried to make stability in antiquities. They found this is a good opportunity to attack me. And they began the worst attack you can ever see in your life. I said, why? Why I'm serving my country? And this happened to me, I resigned. And I said to myself, that's enough. But after one month, they asked it to me to come back. And I said, antiquities is part of me. And I'm a part of antiquities. This is why I came back. When the thief came here, it was dark. Thanks God, it was dark. He could not see anything. He was looking for gold. And this is why he broke that boat was broken to over 100 pieces. This boat? This boat. And it was beautifully restored. Thanks God. The museum is safe. It's safe. This is why I'm saying all the time that Cairo Museum is safe, Egypt is safe. Egyptian antiquities have always attracted outsiders, as witnessed by the writer Mark Twain on his travels in the 19th century. Looting was as familiar in Mark Twain's time as it is today, which is why Egyptian antiquities are spread all over the world. Mark Twain fell under the spell of a sphinx. In 1869, in his illustrated travel book, Innocents Abroad, he wrote, we heard the familiar clink of a hammer. One of our well-meaning reptiles, I mean relic hunters, had crawled up there and was trying to break a specimen from the face of this, the most majestic creation the hand of man has wrought. But the great image contemplated the dead ages as calmly as ever. If you look in the British Museum, you'll see the beard of the Sphinx in a glass case. It changed hands in 1817, courtesy of the Ottoman Viceroy, Mohammed Ali Pasha. Over the decades, the practice continued. Antiquities from Egypt were routinely shipped out, and many are now to be found in museums in the West. Looting, of course, continues to this day, and not just in Tahrir Square, but in sites all over Egypt. Here in Giza, recently discovered antiquities were stolen from a storeroom at the pyramid over there. Teams of archaeologists are still digging up treasure. Whole pyramids have been traced under the sands, and just two years ago, a storeroom of 30 mummies was found here at the burial site in Saqqara. But the sites were very vulnerable during the revolution. This tomb was owned by T, the overseer of the temples and pyramids of the king. I gather there's been a huge amount of looting here, even in this tomb. You can say that perhaps 60% of the monuments have been uh, entered, meaning they broke the door. Uh, in fact, since most of these uh, monuments are empty, the results were poor. Little was taken because it had already gone long ago. Here, behind this little window, um, you had sitting a statue. The, the people, the looters, came from up because there is a trap, and so you can go down. And they uh, started moving this statue of uh, tea and broke it. So it's, it's apparently lying down behind the wall. <laughs> 